After over a year of raising sheep on my farm, we finally have a new addition. Before we see that, let's go ahead and move the sheep into this new paddock that I've set up. And we're gonna check out a bunch of new things that I'm doing with my sheep now, doing two line, Koei's new dog feeder, and a few other things as well that I'll mention that are really helping me with my sheep. That is my two line setup and what I've been so excited about as I finished my perimeter fence, this allows me to move my sheep extremely quickly and I can even move them up to once a day and have it be extremely efficient for me. So it did take a little bit of training to get them to obey this, but it was pretty easy. I'll do a future video about how I train them to the two line, um, but it was pretty simple. You know, I was using the nets and I just put the two line setup on the inside of the nets um, for a few days until they learned uh, and then that, I just went for it the next day, did a two line and they obeyed it. I'm just using um, these pigtails with the bottom hook on it as well. It's probably about 13 inches. If it was slightly lower, it'd be a little bit better for sheep, but this is a good one that um, I got from Powerflex Fence, I think is the website. Then I've got a, this is a Speedrite reel that I got from Premier One. Um, these have been great reels for me. They're about 50 or 60 bucks. And then at the end I have an insulated handle this hook hooks onto the metal and then makes this entire reel hot. The paddock that I had my sheep in, the back side of it had a net, um, but I'm kind of scared of those nets because I had a newer sheep that wasn't trained to the nets very well die in one of those nets, unfortunately. So I'm pretty paranoid about the baby sheep. So I actually left all the um, electricity off on my inside nets and just let Koei do the protection and my perimeter fence do the protection. But now I'm moving them into a paddock that will be all two wire. So I'm going to leave this hot so that the new baby will learn that these lines shouldn't be touched or crossed. This strategy has been super effective for keeping my rams in by the way. And this is a strategy that I've seen people do with different types of animals and it works quite well, whether it's deer, pigs, or sheep. So you start with just uh, your standard net, whether that's hog netting, sheep netting, put that up as a physical barrier that it's not hot. In front of it, use your two wire or one wire or whatever you're trying to train or, or keep them out with and keep that super hot. And these rams were already trained to a two wire, so it's very easy for them to adapt. And I've heard this as well with deer, when there's two fences, there's just something about it. They just do not want to cross it. They don't, they think it's impenetrable basically. So that combination, my rams have not gotten out at all. My rams have gotten out of a sheep fence a couple times. They just pushed on through even though it was hot. So that's sketchy, that's a potential, if it got, they got twisted up in it, they could die. And that's my big problem with those nets for these larger animals. So that is just a precaution. Once the animals are very trained to the nets or electricity, there's really no worry about it, um, except when a ram sees a girl who's um, in heat, he's gonna do just about anything to get her, except this has worked beautifully. Um, I've had zero issues. So this is my makeshift shade structure that I used this summer. You know, we went up to like 98, the sheep were fine with just this. It started out with having more plastic on it, but as the sheep rubbed on it, they eventually broke it down. But it taught me a lot about the type of uh, movement and uh, power that sheep can put into a structure. So it helps me build things into the future. But this was something that I built with Maker Pipe, which is what I built my trellis with this year um, in the last video that I just put out. So I had high hopes for this design, but I think in the end, I'll probably just end up copying Justin Rhodes' design unless I find something else that I think might be better, but I just need something bigger and better for next year because I'm gonna have a lot more sheep. And I won't have shade on the property for another couple years before I'll get my elderberries and different things out here that will provide enough shade for the sheep. So this is Koei's new dog feeder setup because the sheep eventually knocked over the dog food, figured out it was delicious. Yes, sheep will eat meat if uh, given the chance. And um, so we had to figure something else out. 
thank you to the people on uh, Instagram who messaged me and said, hey, you should do this. Uh, Because I post stories almost every day about what I'm doing and if I have certain problems, you guys a lot of times will help me, so thank you. And this um, is basically a Greg Judy design or many different um, sheep farmers use this style of design. Um, I modified it slightly, of course, I can't leave anything alone. Um, What I did, I combined Greg Judy with somebody else's. So this is like a wood panel that it sits low, but when Koei, he comes under this, he can actually just push it up as he goes under. Um, Greg Judy recommended a 10 inch height. I actually did a 12 inch for my dog. I felt like it just wasn't high enough. My sheep haven't gotten in. Now the other way to train your dog is to actually have them jump through this. So this is a secondary option for him. And I kind of liked that better because you're not training your dog to go under something. So like under the fence. And then right here, you just have your standard dog feeder. And then this is all made out of cattle panel and half inch EMT to brace it all together. And I'll make a future video where I actually break down how to build this. But hopefully if you just see this, you'll be able to kind of figure out what I did or what Greg Judy did. So I'll just show you guys like the paddock design that I'm in right now. So I've got my perimeter fence around me, right? All the way around and then back behind me on this side, all two wire and then two wire going across. And then that's gonna connect to my permanent animal paddock I have set up here, which once the next babies come out, I'm gonna open this up so that the moms can go inside of here. The last two or three weeks, I've had them on moves um, where I had just my back netting as a back fence and I wrapped them all the way around like a rectangle. So this two wire that's hard for you guys to see, but that's right there, it's been there for those three weeks. So that's just like how much time that it's saving me because I can set up these huge runs and then just split up the rectangle in a bunch of different squares uh, for all my different moves. So now all I need to do, I'm gonna shrink this paddock down into a few different sections because I'm actually gonna have this field hayed tomorrow. So all this grass is gonna be gone and they need a huge area that they can be in for like two weeks to let all this grass get a little bit more regrowth before I put them back out on it. Um, And I wish that I could have hayed about a couple weeks ago. The timing just didn't work. Um, So I'm haying a little bit late. You know, we're out of our peak grass growing, but going into winter, the grass did really didn't stop growing until about January um, here in my part of Tennessee. So I'm going to hope for that again, hope for some rains. We still have warm weather this week in the 90s. So if we can get a little bit of rain, this grass is going to grow, regrow pretty good. So now it's super easy for me to set this up. I just had to call my sheep in and then run my reel across over to there. I've set my animal paddock up so that this top wire is hot at all times. Then I can attach my hook on there and the entire reel is hot. So incredibly easy. I love this system. Um, It's totally changing the game for me. And you know, the nets have their place, time and place, but two line or one line is the way to go. Come on, come on girls. Sheep, come on. All right, so we made it back in the paddock. They were cutting it pretty close there because JR, my guy who does the hay, is about to arrive. So let me tell you the story about the first sheep. So I come out you know, every morning and I check on the sheep to see if they've had the baby and look at them. And what I see off in the distance is like a, looks like almost like a tail wagging really vigorously. And as I come down, I get more excited because then I see the baby jumping around and doing all this cute stuff. So that first day, Uh, I let them be completely out in the field and you know my goal with my sheep is to have them be completely uh, self-contained like they don't need me to do anything and I'm trying to breed them for that so if one of these mother ewes has any issues with her pregnancy like um, a prolapse or uh, something that indicates that she's not of good stock um, we'll of course raise that baby but then I you know I wouldn't breed her baby or her again because I don't want to carry on a possible genetic trait um, of you know narrow hips or whatever is causing that issue. So it's pretty amazing the baby came out that first day and it could walk, it could do everything um, that a normal sheep could and I guess that's just because in nature the predators are always on the move so the baby needs to be born moving from day one. So it was pretty incredible to witness it. The baby's out in full sun and everything. It doesn't, it uh, didn't seem to be really affected. But now that we have 90, 92 today and tomorrow, I'm opening up this barn so that they know they can always come in here. And I've also noticed that as soon as they have the baby, they wanna go be isolated by themselves, not be by the other sheep. 
um, at least for that 24 to 48 hours. Now that this lamb is, I think is five days old, that mother is now pretty integrated back into the flock. Um, but these are all the fun things that I'm learning as I'm doing this for my first time. So when you're lambing, you're always hoping for twin babies. Triplets are even possible, but I've heard that most of the time when that happens, one of them's a runt. So it's not that great. But twins, two healthy lambs is superb. So on our first birthing, we got one out of each, but they look very, very healthy. Um, so I'm really happy with that. There's two more sheep that are pregnant right now. Um, and we'll see what comes out of them. I do have one sheep that I think may not have gotten pregnant because she should be showing by now and she is not. I'll give her a little bit more time, but obviously the male is working, his parts work, all the other ewes uh, got pregnant, but she didn't. So I will let her go through another season of breeding. If she again does not get bred, then that is an animal that we would wanna select for harvest. Um, because she doesn't get pregnant. So uh, is she providing all these other benefits? Yes, but I want you know, the most productive flock that I can possibly have, and I'm trying to breed the best uh, potential flock possible. So that's what that means, and breeding is pretty hardcore. You have to be pretty ruthless about it, um, but this is how you create amazing stock that's pest resistant, disease resistant, and all those wonderful things, and grow out good meat. So the boys are doing super well. I've got Daniel, my weather in here with the Katahdin Ram and the 5050 Katahdin and St. Croix Ram in here. They've done really great together. And you know, I'm so glad that I have Daniel because he is really my negotiator between humans and sheep and between different flocks of sheep and together. So he's really good at getting the other animals to trust me. Um, he'll always come to me so I can get the other sheep to follow with him. There's just a lot of advantage to having either you know a sheep that you're really close to and he was a bottle baby I didn't raise him but I bought him from somebody who raised him as a bottle baby um, and that's how I got him but um, yeah so he has a lot of good functions like that he can be a little bit annoying <laughs> he's more like a dog than a sheep and you know he wants to come up and be around me quite a bit going forward I'm always gonna have one of those type of sheep that's kind of like that part dog really really friendly to humans sheep because you're uh, they're just kind of a great tool to utilize so the rams will be in this 2.5 acre lot all winter i'll be feeding them hay in here um, you're probably hearing the tractor cutting my hay right now it's gonna sit for a couple days he'll come back and rake it and then bale it this is my second time i've cut hay this year ideally i'm going to get less and less away from baling but until i have enough sheep density it makes sense to cut it and store this as a long-term food storage as i get more density i'll hay less and less hopefully just once a year eventually so it's been a pretty exciting last week with these new babies and just such an incredible experience, you guys. If you are thinking about getting into animal raising, I highly recommend that you do for your land's health, for your family's health, for the safety and security of having your own meat as we go into a very, very uncertain future. I don't think there's anything better you can do than start raising your own meat and eggs. So go ahead and get started. Hope I'm able to inspire you guys a little bit. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next Nature's Always Right video.